Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I have a pretty easy build for an extremely useful tool. Hacksaws were made for cutting metal and plastics, and I use it for a lot more than just that. In fact, a lot of the things I need to cut are much bigger than a standard hacksaw can hack. So, I made my own and solved the problem. You may have seen in a lot of my videos, I use PVC for a lot of my projects, and today is no different. I'm taking a 26 inch length of half inch PVC, and I'm going to set it up so that it will accommodate a 12 inch hacksaw blade. We're gonna be forming this single piece of PVC into our hacksaw frame, but in order to do that, we're gonna have to heat it up and shape it a little bit. But before we start the heating process, we're gonna seal up one end of the PVC and Fill it with sand. If you've ever tried bending or molding plastics, you probably found that once heated, they tend to want to work into very straight angles. We don't want that for this particular frame. We want to keep a more rounded, smooth piece of PVC, and the sand is going to help us do that. The most efficient way I've found for modifying the shape of PVC is to use a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer on a very hot setting, but it does take a lot more time and a heat gun works very efficiently. The key here is to keep the heat focused just on the line around the area where you're going to want the bend to take place and not beyond that. So as soon as you start to apply pressure, that's the exact point and only the point that will start to fold in on itself. This is perfect for the frame that we're making. In a recent video, I made stadium horns out of PEX pipe and came up with a great little trick for getting a heated shape to cool and set quicker. Get a rag, some water, and apply it to the area as soon as you remove it from the heat. Your shape will hold exactly as you have it while you're applying the cooling rag. If you prefer, you can always make the bends without the use of the sand, but what you'll find is that without the sand there to cause some resistance, the PVC will actually fold more like a piece of paper. With a fold instead of a bend, you're actually going to end up with a frame that has some more flexibility to it, and all that does is just make it a little bit more challenging for the blade to do its job. The final shape to the frame that we're going for here is one that lays flat on the ground and it has a little bit wider of a gap between the two ends than the blade itself. Once I'm happy with the frame shape, I go ahead and remove the tape and get all the sand out. If you find it's hard to get some of that sand out of there, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and run some water through it and that'll get it nice and clean. You could go ahead and drill holes and fix the blade to the frame at this point, but I have another step which makes it work even better. We're going to start by heating one end at a time, and then take a block of wood to flatten out about an inch or so of the end of the pipe. Soon you're going to see exactly why it was a good idea to make sure that the frame lays flat on the ground. Because of the way we flattened the two ends, we have a nice line between the two of them that will accept the blade once we make a notch to set it into.
With notches cut in both ends, I go ahead and take the blade and make sure that once I set it into the notches, everything lines up well and does not cause any weird bend in the blade. If it does, I'll go back and cut out a little bit more into my notched lines, but if it works just fine, we take the blade back out and set it up to put a hole right in the middle of each end of the PVC. The holes that you want to make need to accommodate a size number eight machine screw. I found that that works really well for fitting through the PVC as well as the blades themselves. With all the heating, cutting, and drilling out of the way, all that's left is to grab the number eight screws and some number eight nuts go ahead and put the blade into the slots with the cutting edge facing down, put the screws in, and lock everything down. By tightening down the screw and nut, what will happen is the PVC will actually clamp around the blade, causing a very secure hold on the blade, and making the frame work out really wonderful for your newly built hacksaw. Now I have a hacksaw that has a seven inch clearance from the edge of the blade to the top of the frame, which means I have no more problems getting through larger pieces of AVS and PVC pipe. But if you're anything like me, you like to have proof that something actually worked out. So let's take a hack at cutting through four inch ABS pipe. With a regular hacksaw, when I needed to cut something at about a four inch size or bigger like that, you actually had to rotate the material in order to get the hacksaw to go around without stopping at the frame. The problem with that is, sometimes you ended up with some jagged edges or little kind of fractional gaps. That wasn't good and it meant a lot of extra sanding once I was done. As you can see here, no jagged gaps and very little left to have to smooth out. Thanks for stopping by Dialed In DIY today and watching my custom hacksaw build. If you enjoyed it, or at least got something out of it, I'd love it if you'd let me know by clicking that thumbs up. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel while you're here, and feel free to check out my playlists for similar and other projects. But as always, come on back because there'll be plenty more Dialed In DIY to come.